Hey you! What up? Welcome to my channel. Welcome back. It's Faves X Fails time for the month of March filmed in April. This is a video in which I talk about all of my favorite products for the month. I apply them onto my face so I can show you rather than tell you why I love them. Also, I talk about the products that did not work for me, aka the fails. I tell you why they did not work for me. So this is a roundup video, something that you can reference. All the products that I'm loving are linked below as always, so do check them out if you're interested. And without further ado, let's get into this video. Remember to subscribe if you aren't already, hit that notification bell so you can watch all of my Wednesdays and Sundays videos. Do it! And now let's get into this faves x fails for the month of March And my favorite primer of the month goes to Drum roll, please Tanessa Myrick's yummy skin glow serum primer Yes, this is also one of my favorite highlighters for the month This is a unique type of product and even though I have oily AF acne prone skin, I am able to utilize it, not in the sense that I can wear it all over the face, but I can use it to highlight and to prime certain areas of interest for that super glassy glowy skin. This is a $34 product available at Sephora. It has two shades. I did review this in my Yummy Skin Foundation review. So the shade that I'm wearing today is Juice Boost, but it does come in two shades. Applying that to the perimeter of my face, to like the cheekbone area, to the temple. Also, I've been liking it along my jawline. Also on my collarbone a little, just to give me a bit of a glow. And also on my forehead, but today, as you can see, I have some mountains on my forehead. So they're in my way, and I'm just gonna kinda go around them and just dot this product everywhere. But then for the rest of my face, because I am oily, because I have enlarged pores in the center of my cheek, I am gonna use my Essence My Skin Perfector Tinted Primer, just so I can mattify it and perfect the center. But if you are someone who has normal or dry skin, I have a feeling you will love this all over and underneath your foundation because this really does prime the skin. It gives a little bit of a tacky finish for other products to really adhere to, but it also provides this really beautiful dewy luminosity, that glow from within that is so highly sought after. So definitely try it out if you haven't already. Do I have a failed primer for the month? No, I don't. It was a good month for primers. Nothing to complain about. <laughs> Unfortunately though, it wasn't such a great month for foundations for me personally. You might remember about a month or so ago, I did try out the Danessa Myrick's Yummy Skin Serum Foundation, also with the primer that I just showed you. And although the coverage of this foundation was so beautiful and so luminous and so flawless and so like glamorous yet wearable at the same time, it looked so good upon its initial application. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, it did not wear very well on me and on my oily skin. Then, after having posted that review, I actually realized, and after speaking with Danessa, I realized that I applied way too much product and I only needed to add one drop, one tiny little drop of this product to my entire face for the intended usage and the intended purpose of this foundation. So I decided to give it a whole month to wear it the way that I was supposed to. And I gotta say, unfortunately, I am still just too oily for this foundation. Yes, it looks beautiful at first. Yes, it looks absolutely dreamy. I would describe it as a dreamy finish, but with my oils and with just my skin texture, this just, didn't work for me the way that I wanted it to. If you are someone who has dry, normal skin, or even mature skin, I have a feeling that you will love this one. This is a $34 product, so although it's in my fails category, it may not necessarily be a fail for you because it is a glorious, it is a gorgeous, gorgeous product. Let's uh, turn it over to a positive. Let me talk about a product that I actually did love in the foundation category. I am talking about the IT Cosmetics CC Plus Nude Glow Color Correct medium coverage skin tint plus SPF 40. Now this actually surprised me because my skin typically does not love IT Cosmetic CC Cream. I found that in the past it has broken me out and because I'm also pretty much acne prone, the initial IT Cosmetic CC Cream and I were not a match. It would just always break me out in a rash. This product did not do anything of the sort, although I do have a couple of breakouts. I don't attribute it to this product though because typically my breakouts with the IT Cosmetic CC Cream were always along my jawline, which is kind of like my problem area. I did not experience any of that. In fact, I found this product to be really, really 
really reasonable, really beautiful, long wearing, high SPF, SPF 40. I also actually had two shade matches. Today I am wearing medium tan. This is a $42 product, not super inexpensive, but look how beautiful it looks. This is actually a medium buildable coverage, and of course you can sheer it out. But what I like about it the most is how easily it applies. Just like no fuss, super intuitive, just slap it on and go. But basically, I thought this was great. All right, I am going to let that product hang out on my face. While I talk about another failed foundation, actually a tinted moisturizer that was a very quick and immediate type of fail for me. Sadly, I'm talking about the Rare Beauty Positive Light Tinted Moisturizer. Now this is a $29 product at Sephora in the US. And in the US, it is marketed as a broad spectrum SPF 20 sunscreen type of tinted moisturizer. Now, when I did my initial review of this product, I noticed this ingredient, homo salate, at 9%. This is something that I typically don't see in foundations or in tinted moisturizers. I have seen this ingredient in chemical sunscreens, which I personally do not use. I had to look it up. Basically, this is kind of like a controversial type of ingredient. So the reason why I even brought up how much this costs in the US is for the following. In Canada, this product is not exactly the same. First of all, it's 38 Canadian dollars. Secondly, I'm going to pop up a screenshot of what this product looks like on Sephora US versus Sephora Canada. So on the Sephora US, it is marketed as a sunscreen with SPF 20. On the Sephora Canada, there is no such mention of it. You can tell by the price difference which one is which. And the reason is because this ingredient, homo salate is actually banned in Canada. This is a known toxic type of ingredient. It is safe to use at a maximum of 10%. This includes 9%. So to me, that's almost at the max. That is pretty high up there. And I am the type of person who would rather be safe than sorry. I am someone who has problematic skin. I break out on the regular. So I don't want anything to enrage my skin any further. This ingredient is also very much restricted in Japan. And moreover, it actually did not wear very well. This ended up looking very, very oily and very greasy at the end of the day. A little too oily and a little too greasy for how little coverage it offered. This is a light to medium coverage type of product. And usually with a sunscreen, I find that they have a lot more longevity. This was not the case. And you guys know me, if you watch my YouTube videos a lot, you know I'm a big fan of Rare Beauty. I love a lot of their products. I use them on the regular all the time. This just wasn't a hit for me. This was a fail. And when I also found out that Canada is selling a completely different product, similar, but without the SPF and without the ingredient, I thought, hey, maybe I'd want to try the Canadian version. But then again, it just didn't wear very well. So maybe I'm not interested altogether. Anyway, that is my experience with it. Sadly, it was a fail for me. So I am moving on to concealer. Speaking of ingredients, this next concealer that I am looking for in my stash over here <laughs> has some really great ingredients. Hyaluronic acid, turmeric, and ashwagandha. I am talking about the LYS Triple Fix Full Coverage Brightening Concealer. LYS is a clean beauty brand, as we know, at Sephora. This is an $18 product, and I absolutely love it. Generally speaking, clean foundations and concealers don't have the staying power for me and for my oily skin. I hate to sound like a broken record, but they just don't deliver the same type of results. This concealer is not in that category by any means. This performs really well. This has the staying power. This has the coverage. It has everything and I love it and I've been liking it and I've been using it a lot, which is why it's a fave. So what I'm gonna do is basically dot it to my problem areas. Also add it to my under eye, in between my brows, my chin, around my nose to brighten and lift certain areas. I'm gonna use my Rare Beauty Liquid Touch Concealer brush that I love. And I'm gonna blend out the areas that I'm going to brighten first. And the reason why I'm blending out these areas first is I don't want them sitting on my face too long and becoming too solid. I want them to brighten but still look very natural in these areas, as opposed to the areas where I'm trying to conceal, where I actually do want them to become solid and cover up as much as they possibly can. All right, so now that I have concealed all those areas, now I'm gonna go to the spot and conceal those last. And now basically I'm just tapping out the area around the spot. 
I just realized I'm using a brighter concealer than my skin tone because I typically use it for brightening. But in this case, I have a pretty massive spot and I do need the concealer to match. So maybe you can't tell, but I can. When I turn sideways, it clearly looks brighter. Shoot, that's okay. Anyways, no fail concealers this month, but I do have a powder from Huda Beauty that is not a fail. It is a fave indeed, and it is Huda's new Cherry Blossom Cake Powder. I've mentioned this before, and I guess I'll mention it quickly again. I'm not a huge fan of this particular powder in any other shade but this one. I've tried it in the lightest shade, I've tried it in a skin matching shade, and for some reason they all seem to gray out my foundation or my concealer that I was wearing, so I didn't really reach for it ever again. But this product does not go gray on me. In fact, it brightens and it sets my concealer so beautifully. You just watch. It just lifts it and it just mattifies it. It makes it look so velvety and so, so flawless. I truly couldn't ask for a better finish. And I'm getting the sense that this product is actually pretty popular. It keeps on getting sold out at Sephora. Well, I'll link it anyway, just like I link everything that I'm mentioning that I'm loving. And if it's there, don't hesitate. Especially if you are a medium skin tone to a tan skin tone like myself, this is something you will love for brightening. It's just the right shade for the under eye or even to like brighten these hollows around the nose. Like I have these like pretty deep nostril folds here. So I like to just pop it in right there in that little triangle just to pop that area out. It really truly is so, so good. Now this is a $34 product. It has a cap, which I like. It has a scent. But the scent does not linger. And it's also a scent that I like, so I'm not gonna complain about it. But if you're someone who doesn't like fragrance in their cosmetics at all, be mindful, this is very fragrant. All right, so I almost got a little too carried away with the powder before I realized, oh my God, I have a fave cream blush. So I can't powder down my face just yet. The cream blush that I'm talking about actually also doubles as a lipstick. And I am referring to the REM Beauty Cheek and lipstick, <laughs> looking like little astronaut helmets. So I have this one in three different shades. These are, I believe, $18 each. Right now they are sold out on the REM Beauty website. Too bad, because I actually wanted more colors. I believe there's five shades altogether. So I needed to get my hands on the rest of them because these are just so cute and so easy to use and such great pigmentation. So for today, I'm gonna go for this super bright one. This one is called Leading Lady. And again, like I said, you could use this as a cheek stain or you can use this as a lipstick it is a beautiful beautiful lipstick cute packaging love it I am gonna blend that out with my rare beauty not to be confused with REM beauty or REM beauty blush brush that I've been talking about a lot lately I mean this brush works with liquids and creams and it blends out the product so seamlessly I mean this is a pretty pigmented little cheek stick but look how gorgeous. It is just super intuitive, super easy to use, and I love those types of products for 2022. I like the no fuss, easygoing makeup. I love the glam too. I love the artistry, but just this effortless ease has been drawing me in lately. I appreciate it. So I definitely, definitely love these blushes. I've been using them a lot as both cheek stains or lipsticks, and I've been loving them. They're fave for the month. Unfortunately, I can't say that I love the blush in the Iconic London Silk Glow Duo. I actually do like the highlighter. The highlighter is really, really beautiful. Just like a modern version of a very blinding highlighter from 2017, you know the one, but like a thinner, more like ethereal, glassy, glowy skin type of version. The blush, unfortunately, I found that I had to put a lot of work, a lot of like bristle pressure in order to get any sort of payoff. For me, something like this isn't really worth keeping around if both of the components work perfectly. I guess for the sake of today's video, since I do like the highlighter, I will use the highlighter. But let me know if you guys feel the same. Let me know if you've had a different experience with this blush, because this does have really, really high ratings on Sephora. So I was a little confused. So the highlighter, you see it? It's very thin. It's not like a chalky, powdery formula. In fact, this feels a little bit more like a jelly finish, like you pick it up and you can definitely see like sparkles, you can see pigment, but once you blend it out, it almost has like a watery type of texture, like that thin, you know? But it glides on very, very effortlessly and it just 
adds the prettiest glow. All right, moving on to a bronzer that I did not love this month. I actually don't know if I kept it around. It was sitting here on my desk for like nearly two weeks and I kept on reaching for it because it was just there. But I think after the last time I decided to finally let it go. I am talking about the Physicians Formula Bread and Butter Bronzer. I'll pop it up because I don't seem to have it any longer. I guess I finally decided to get rid of it. This isn't a super pricey product. This is only about 16 or $17. But what I didn't like about this one is that it was really difficult to blend out. When I used a precise type of bronzer brush, and when I say precise, this is still not really precise for most people. This is precise for me because I have giant cheeks and a giant face, but something like this is probably most people's bronzer brushes. I far prefer something huge like this, so it's kind of like a one and done sweep across the face. But going back to what I was saying, when I use a more precise or like a smaller brush, I find that it picks up either too much product or it stamps it in a way that it stains the skin and then it becomes really, really difficult to blend out. So I made that mistake a couple of times. It just wasn't very easy to work with. Now, when I used a bigger brush, it did become a little bit easier, but then again, I don't always want to use a big ass brush like this for smaller areas like my nose or like under my mouth. Not amazing, but some people might find it good, I guess, for the price. It's actually been kind of slim pickings in the bronzer category. There hasn't been much out. I feel like I'm seeing the same stuff over and over again. Anybody else feel the same? But now onto the fun. I was about to give it away. I was about to say, now onto the fun palette. Yeah, the palette category is gonna be fun this time. My favorite for the month is Natasha Denona Pastel Palette. It is very, very beautiful to look at, $65. Definitely a fave, like a top fave for sure. Just because I love these colors, I love the quality, I find it to be outstanding, just like most of Natasha Denona palettes. I especially love the fact that these pastel eyeshadows are not chalky. In fact, they apply kind of sheer, kind of painterly, like watercolor-like. And so because of that, you are able to achieve just like the most beautiful, the most ethereal, fresh type of looks. I love it and I wanna keep reaching for it. Although I do see that maybe some people might think that this is like a specialty palette and not for everyone because you definitely are not gonna be reaching for these types of colors every day, right? Or maybe you are, maybe you can just slap on one shade and call it a day. So that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm just gonna slap on one shade, call it a day because you could definitely do that every day. Eyeshadow primer is Fenty as always and per usual. Laura Lee Los Angeles L19 brush. I am going to dip it into, mm, let's see. So I have like a peachy cheek going. I got a little lavender over here in the background. I got a little white, I got a little gold. Mm, I am thinking, let's spruce it up with a little mint, shall we? I am gonna slap that across the lid. You see that? It really sticks to that base. It really adheres very well. And although it's pastel, it's light, but it is proper. Oh yeah, just gave myself a huge lid. Just packing that on. There's absolutely no fallout. The quality is just so outstanding. And this is a shade that's really hard to get right. Just kind of why I wanted to reach for it today. I wanted to show you that this shade can be a one and done. It can be applied with effortless ease. So then I'm gonna take a fluffy brush, those colors, and just blur out the edges so that it's not so stark, but I do still wanna keep the majority of the color on the lid. So kind of just sweeping off, erasing the edges, making it a little bit more subdued, you know? God, I love Natasha Denona eyeshadows. They are so easy to work with. They are so lovely. They make me feel like an artist again. Oh, so good. Another palette that I really liked this month was a fraction of the price of this one, and it was the Milani Gilded Flora. Also very pastel-y, very springy, but it did have some deeper kind of purpley shades and also some neutrals, some shimmery tones here and there. And this was a really, really lovely palette, especially for $20. Super fresh colors. I really like this green that actually showed up on the skin. I really loved all these like lavender moments. This was great. And it was just nice to see this color compilation. So I guess maybe I am gonna dip into one more shade. Let's go for a little sparkle. I'm gonna go for this light shade here called Fresh as a Daisy. It's kind of like a satiny pale shade. I'm just gonna pop that in my inner corner and just 
blend that with my finger just for like a little bit of a bright accent. I really do love a bright inner corner. I think it looks good on everyone. I'm gonna pop a little bit to my brow bone. And then I guess maybe I should dip into another color because I'm trying to show you that I like this one, but I really like the look and I want to preserve the integrity of the look, which is supposed to be a one shade look. I'm just going to do something simple. I'm going to grab this neutral light brown. It's called Salt of the Earth. Great name. And I'm just going to push that into my lash line like this, just to kind of add a little bit of a shadow underneath and that's about it. That's all I'm gonna do. Just take my word for it. This is a really nice palette. I've tried it, I've worn it, I like it, and it's 20 bucks. Also, almost forgot to mention, I absolutely loved, and this was probably my favorite product for the month, I absolutely loved REM Beauty's eye gels. These little cute pots right here. They come in various colors. The mint was something that I used in my review video of the latest collection from REM Beauty, but I believe there's like five or maybe seven shades all together. I have three of them and I gotta say this is a very, very beautiful, unique product. Inside it looks kind of like a gel and it has like a cold gelatin-like finish, but what I like about it is how thin and fine it applies how shimmery and how beautiful it is. My favorite part is that it does not get crusty. Now, a lot of these shimmery types of eyeshadows, when you work with them, the more you build them up, the more they tend to take on this sort of crusty appearance that isn't really flattering on most lids, and it just starts looking very, very cheapy. But this was unique, I will say. I really enjoyed my experience with this product. I don't know if I can put it to use in this particular look, you know what, maybe just a little bit on the inner corner. So I'm gonna plop some to the back of my hand here. I'm gonna pick it up with a brush and just like using the tiniest amount, I'm gonna kiss the inner corner for a little sparkle. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but it is just super, super, super lovely. I believe this is another sold out product. It is $16. And the eyeshadow palettes from Rem Beauty are $24, which by the way, I also like. I'm not including them today just because I really like these. And these little eye jellies, they kind of beat everything that I'm talking about today. If you can get your hands on this, please do. This, I think, is absolutely worth it. Especially if you are someone who likes a little bit of glam, but who wants glam to be very achievable and easy. This is the product for you. The rest of the products, we're just flying through. All faves, baby. All faves. So it's a good video. Favorite new eyeliner is Lancome Idol Ultra Precise Waterproof Liner. It is a marker type, so very, very easy to use, especially for those of you who are liner beginners. By the way, you can take the edge of this, stamp it to create a wing, right? And then you can elongate it if you want. Marker types are generally not my favorite liners to work with just because I find that they get contaminated with eyeshadow or with powder and then they dry out rather quickly. So for me, I prefer the ones that you dip, but this one is really, really easy to use. It has great reviews, people love it, and I totally understand why. It is really easy to use. I'm gonna try the stamping method one more time. Okay, easy enough. I'm feeling a little retro with this look. So this is a $22 liner. It's not gonna last you very, very long, especially if you're using it over eyeshadow, but as long as it lasts you, it will be good. Next, let's curl the lashes and let's apply my favorite mascara for the month, which by the way, also happens to be from Lancome. It's their Lash Adol Water proof version, $27, I believe. And this, I gotta say, is a really, really decent mascara, even though it has a gimmicky wand, but the mascara is very buildable, so that's what I like about it the most. You can really work up the lashes. So the formula, although waterproof, is flexible and it's sticky enough that if you add layers to it, it won't clump and it won't look messy. Ooh! Of course, I get mascara on my highlighter. That's me, I'm that girl. But don't worry, I'm gonna finish my lashes first and then I'll take care of my highlighter. All right, so now I'm gonna add one more coat of mascara just to build it up. So I've been getting a lot of questions about how to remove waterproof mascara and the answer is simple. You gotta use an oil-based eye makeup remover. So if you're someone who likes to just wash your entire face and your makeup with like a gentle cleanser, that will not do the job. That will not actually melt the waterproof mascara or the waterproof liner. You need something a little bit oilier to actually melt it. And although you can go in with the balm and try like the double cleansing method using an oil first and then using your cleanser, 
I still say that rubbing your delicate eye area with a balm or with an oil is just a little too much rubbing. You're better off using something like a Lancome Bifacil eye makeup remover or a Clinique Take the Day Off makeup remover, which also can be used on the lips for those non-transferable lipsticks or whatnot. But basically that is what I like to use. So I first like to just saturate like a cotton round, apply that to my lashes, kind of just hold there for a second, no rubbing, just kind of melt it down and then gently wipe it off. And then I go in with my oil and then I go in with my cleanser. So it's almost like triple cleansing, but for waterproof products, it is important to remove all of them. And they can be sometimes pretty stubborn, but that's why they're waterproof, because they're supposed to be bulletproof. All right, so now I definitely have like a Twiggy-esque look without even having drawn on the Twiggies, but maybe just for the sake of this video, to make it more fun, I will draw on little Twiggies. Little thickies though, because this is a pretty thick type of marker. So drawing fine lines in this area is gonna be a little bit more difficult. Oh yeah. Okay, moving on to lips. This month's lip category, I actually have several favorites. Number one, I really, really, really love these new Pixie lip tints. These are so cute and so dainty. I especially love the shade Love. It's appropriately called Love. This looks and feels so easy on the lips. You can add just a little bit for a slightly blotted effect for like a stain on your lips like this. Or you can obviously layer a little bit more on top for more of a pop, but I really like these. These are actually called Tint Fix Satin Lip Tints. I have them in three shades here, but Love is definitely my favorite. I feel like it's great to just add a little bit of oomph to your everyday face, even if you're not wearing too much makeup, even if it's just like a skin tint or nothing at all. This is enough to just like add a little bright pop of interest, just like a little something. Quality is really, really nice and it's very long wearing. Second product that I'm loving is actually a freaking steal, you guys. Oh my God. I am talking about the new Wet n Wild Mega Slicks Lip Glosses. These are $3 each. I mean, what can you actually get for $3 outside of this Mega Slicks lip gloss by Wet n Wild? I don't even think you can get a coffee in NYC for $3. You can't even get on the subway. But these are actually $3 and they are so, so good. I recently did a swatch video in partnership with Wet n Wild, but today's mention is not paid whatsoever. This is just me raving and loving this product because for $3, how can I not? First of all, the colors are so damn beautiful. One of my favorites is the shade here called Low-Key Pink. It's just like the most beautiful, the most low-key shade of pink ever. I'm actually gonna use a little bit of a lip liner to add on top of what I already have. So I'm gonna use Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk just to outline a little bit, just to give my mouth a little bit of a frame, you know? And I know I already have the lip tint on, but even without the lip tint, this is just such a stunning shade. It's like the perfect amount of color to gloss. So it's sheer enough, but it's pigmented enough. It's like the perfect combination of both. How cute, super, super fresh, super easy, $3 more cute shades. I'm a big fan. And you guys have probably heard me say that recently actually, when I did my Sephora VIB recommendations video, I realized that a lot of my favorite products are actually from the drugstore. They're actually from Target. They're actually from other brands that are not available at Sephora that are a fraction of the cost and that do, that perform the same function, if not better than some of the higher end brands. And let me tell you, Wet n Wild is one of those brands. I have loved this brand since I was a tween. In fact, I think those was probably like my first makeup brand that I've ever like purchased with my own babysitting money. And I'm pretty sure I probably got a lip gloss or maybe like a lip liner. And so the fact that I'm still wearing it till this day goes to tell you that this brand and these products, they stand the test of time. But from Sephora this month, I did like one lip product that I will mention to you. And it is the Cozy Lip Creams from Makeup by Mario. These are $24 each. They are sort of similar in texture to the those like lip mousses, like the lip creams. It's not as drying or as like solid of a formula as a non-transferable liquid lipstick. In fact, these do transfer, but they're like a little bit fluffier. They're a little bit more pillowy, like easier to wear. So I like them, but I don't like them as much as the Mario lipsticks, which to me were probably the best product or one of the top products for 2021. I've raved about it a lot. I've worn these lipsticks a lot. And so this is really, really good, though not as great as the lipsticks, but the reason why I'm mentioning them today is because I think Mario is a master at 
color. He really understands what looks great on skin tones and not just like a particular set of skin tones. He knows what looks good on all skin tones. And so for that, I gotta give it to Mario's Cozy Lip Creams. They are great. So with that said, you guys, I think that was my final product, my final fave in today's Faves X Fails for the month of March filmed in April. I hope you enjoyed this list. I hope you enjoyed my take on all of these products, some of which worked for me, others that did not work for me. And I hope you'll be back for another video. I am going to zoom on out. I'm gonna direct you to more of my videos over here. Check them out and I will see you guys in my next one. Mwah. Peace.